Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Sunwalks channel. Today, we're going to be building the real great Shinanju. And this is a very tragic story as well. Shinanju is a very familiar MS for most of the Gundam fans. And you must know it. But unfortunately, Shinanju didn't get a treatment like the latest RG. Shinanju reused the Gundam Mark II frame. It just extend the height and, you know, add a couple joints. And then they call it a new frame. I feel like Shinanju is that famous. Like, it should get a new frame instead of just reusing those really bad early RG frames. Like, look at the example of Torgi's uh, Unicorn, the new, and then the Sazabi. They all got new frames. Why can't Shinanju get one? And instead, they have to reuse that really, really bad, loose, and extremely bad frame. So, I think that Shinanju is a tragedy. And, you know, with a good topic like this, they completely missed the opportunity. Is It's just bollocks. Now, anyway, let's look at the side right here first. So the side right here, we can see the frame. Yes, you're looking at the frame like, no, it doesn't look like Gundam Mark II. Jokes on you, it's actually based on the Gundam Mark II. And it's just extended a couple joints, and then they call it a new frame, as I said. But I gotta admit that this finish right here looks way better than the high grade version and the master grade version for the surface finish. And then turning to the other side, we can see some actions right here. You know, most of the actions right here, they are required to be on the action base, of course, because, you know, as for those of you who watch my Gundam Mark II review, you know that the Mark II ways is really loose and, you know, with a heavy backpack like the Shinanjo because it got two big thrusters at the back, Shinanju is going to have a hard time to stand on itself because it will constantly leaning back and it's not really a good sign. So anyway, let's just unbox the Shinanju first. Now let's look at the instruction menu and the runners. So this is the instruction menu and you know, it kind of give you a little bit of explanation of the MS and then here's the, here's the parts. And then up here, we got some more information as well. And at the back right here, this is the sticker guide. And then we also have the color guide down here. And for some reason, I don't know, is this like a, is this like an error or not? But Flum Flumton's hair is blonde. It's not white. I don't know, did they didn't watch their own anime or like, did they do this on purpose? So first we can look at the A runner. So first right here, the tubes, we have the tubes at the waist right here. And then we have the, the beam rifle right here and then we have the few tanks at the back the thrusters and then we have the barrel and then we have a uh, down here i don't really know oh this is probably the handle of the of the tomahawk and the ah i forgot what the name is anyway just call it tomahawk and then we also have the clear piece for the eye b runner contains the advanced ms joint it looks a bit different than the mark ii because it probably just extended a height and other than that there's not much different than the mark ii a h2 runner contains the yellow part of the ms including the waist part down here and then i don't know this is the uh i think this is the waist as well i don't know about these right here we have two j runners they are all uh the beam effect parts we have the G runner right here. You can see that this is the undergate design of the plate gold plate parts for the gold plate parts slide under. And then other than that, let's look at the others. Uh, we have the possibly this is the torso part right here. This is the torso part. This is the shield. This will be the part of the shield. And this is the waist. This is the I don't know what which part is this. And these are the hands right here. The hands part right here. And then. I don't know about these ones right here. We have two E runners right here. So I will just take E1 as the example. And now look at this. Um, we have the, I don't know part, this This is the thrusters or something like that. This is the inner frame of the legs right here. And then this will be the inner frame. I don't know which part is this. This is possibly the torso. And then we have the feet down here. We have the, this is part of the legs. This is the waist armor. And then we have some, Ah, I don't know the rest of it. Hmm. Okay. We have the F1 and F2 runner. So let's take F1 as the example. So first we can see the tomahawk. We can see the, this is the hands part, I think. This is, oh wait, this is the shoulder joint. And then this is the legs. I, I don't really know about this part. And then we have some hands option up here. 
And then we have the action base adapter right here. Other than that, I think most of the part, I couldn't really guess it. We have two eye parts right here. They are metallic silver. And I think I will repaint them. And then this will be the inner details of the joints and as well as the armors. This is the C part right here. We have the shield, we have the waist, waist, and then legs. And this is the shoulders, this is the face, and then we have the antenna, we have the head, and then we have, I don't know which part it is, this is the torso, and then I don't know this part, and this is the part of figure right here. Two D runners, they are gloss, gloss finish, gloss red, so make sure you don't scratch them. Now, let's look at this. So, you know, first we can see some very beautiful finish on the surface, so I hope I don't scratch them during the... Uh, assemble process and then we have the so first we have the shoulders legs part and then shoulders part this is the i don't know which one this is oh this is a thruster i'm sorry this is the legs part as well legs part and then the rest i could i couldn't really get it this is the hands armor right here obviously we have the h1 runner right here because i don't want to scratch the uh, chrome plate surface so i'll just keep it in the bag so first you can see all the gold finish right here it looks absolutely beautiful so the big one right here will be the shield and this is this is the this is the symbol at the front of the torso this will be at the knees this will be at the oh i don't know what, which part is is this at the side of the legs and then this will be at the torso at the torso and then these will probably at the hands I might be wrong. Lastly, decals. And this is basically everything. So let's just jump into the review first. Hey guys, welcome back to the ROG Shinanju review. So this is the finishing of the Shinanju. The surface finish looks absolutely amazing. I like it. But as I said at the beginning, because the Shinanju is a very low budget project, they reduced the Gundam Mark II frame instead of creating a new frame. So the frame must have some problem. And also because it's using the Mark II frame design. So of course they didn't change much about the frame. And sometimes they try to fit parts into the frame and it become really loose. Some parts that I want to specially mention that you need some glue to make it stable. Otherwise it is really annoying to see the parts falling again and again and again and again. So those parts I will mention later. Put the negative things aside. Take a moment to appreciate how amazing the finish is. I think if you are just putting into the shelf and then, you know, just for display, I think this can, you can get this and have fun because, you know, the finish is by far the best Shinanju finish that I ever seen. You know, not even the master grade, not even the high grade titanium finish can compare to this RG. This RG finish is absolutely amazing. All right, quick chatting. Let's get the business first. So let's start looking at the articulation. So first, let's start with the head. So the head, unfortunately, my antenna is already broken. I don't know how it broke because when I oh, when I you know pick up the runner and I start assembling the head, and the antenna by the time is already broken. I can't find the piece in the box or in the bags. So I don't know what happened, but I can't find the rest of the antenna. So I'll just have to stick with this broken antenna. Let's talk about the movement right here. So move up, move down, and then move around side to side like this. The angles and the moving range is not really that good because the these two pieces of armor right here is really getting in the way so the head articulation is really affected to change the mono eye direction you need to open up the top of the head and you will see a green piece right here for you to adjust the mono eye direction but honestly you can't really change the mono eye that much it's just a very slight move so this mono eye feature is not really that good i like the ones on the saku better so i wish that the technology on the Saku Mono Eye can move to this Shinanju, but I guess we just have to manually adjust it. Now, let's look at the Shinanju torso, the black, the gold, the gloss red going along really well. I like it, it's amazing. But the thing is, because it's using the Mark II frame, so it have the same problem just like the RG Mark II, which is really lose the torso and the feeling don't really, it, it doesn't feel good, it's just. So let me show you what, it, what it's like. So it's the same thing, just like the Mark II is really loose and I don't really like that feeling. But if you're trying to fix this problem, perhaps you can try glue or you can try uh, 
fill in some putty or you can try to fill or you can try to drip some nail polish in there to try to fix the joint to tighten up the joint maybe you'll get a better feeling than this but i'm just putting back into the shelf after this review so i don't bother to do that because i'm just leaving it into the shelf for presentation so if you are someone who like to take it out and then pose it pose with it perhaps you want to fix the torso now let's talk about the movement of the torso so the movement of the torso is pretty standard it's just a uh, nearly 90 degrees uh, moving around it's not really that special and then uh, to open the cockpit is pretty easy just push up two parts and then uh, pull down this one part right here and then you can see the cockpit now let's talk about the arms and the shoulder so the shoulder there's a piece right here for you to open it's sort of like a hidden detail so you can just open this up the whole shoulder piece can move this small pieces of armor right here uh, there's a little bit of movement right here so you can still mess around with that armor the whole arm can uh can uh lift up not really because the because the piece right here the joint right here is actually getting in the way so the lifting angle is not really that impressive the whole arm can rotate so which is really nice the whole arm bending is really nice again is really nice it can move to the front for a little bit it's just a little bit you can move to the front and for the hands down here unfortunately because uh these this armor right here is really it's really large and it's getting in the way of the hands moving around so the maximum you can move is around 180 you cannot move 360 anymore so at the back of the arm right here you can lift up and you can see that there's a beam saber hidden in there but unfortunately you cannot just pull it out and use it bandai gave you uh, some separate piece the separate piece for you to put to hold it on the hand for the beam sabers and for the beam saber effect part they gave you two i'm showing you one of it but i do want to say that this beam saber effect part looks really awesome i like this one way better than the others so just briefly going through the hands option we have two leftover fist hand from the mark two frame which is not usable but i kept it anyway and then we have two full movable hand again it's useless and then we have one open hand for the left hand and that's it we don't have any more hands option the fist hand this time is not provided although it's on the frame but it's the but it doesn't fit and if you want the fist hand the only uh, the only way uh, there's two ways you can get it uh one way is using the builder builder parts hands or you can get the rg expansion set which provided the fist hand for you as well but honestly i don't care about the fist hand so it doesn't really matter to me now let's take a look at the waist right here so first the front skirt is not removable because the tube is really affecting the articulation uh the side skirt right here is uh movable as well uh, it's a pretty average angle and it also and you can also pull down to see some details inside the side skirt and you can you know simply push back uh, and it's gone so the back skirt right here is a little bit movement yeah it's, it's better than the front skirt but still it's a pretty below average movement right here and then for the at the back skirt right here we can see that there's a spot for you to open and once you open you can see the joint right here for you to put on the beam rival and then store it at the back skirt and also down here at the back skirt right here we can see that this small this small red piece right here also got a little bit of movement as well okay talk about the legs movement right here so kicking to the side is not really nine degrees kicking to the front is barely 90 degrees because the is is it's like 45 degrees because the front skirt as i mentioned is not movable kicking to the back is is pretty bad as well and i do want to say something about this at the at the front right here you can see that at this knee right here there's, there's a piece of red armor right here it's really easy to fall out i really recommend you to super glue this and then for the banding though because uh the skirt armor is pretty big so you know sometimes it's getting in the way but the best bending angle is like this so the bending is quite average and then for the feet down here the tip the tip of the feet is movable as well you can move side to side and the and there's i don't think there's any movement and i don't think there's any movement so uh the feet you can move front to back as well but not and a bit of side to side and that's it and then you know the thruster at the side of the leg you can lift up and lift down as well but i do want to tell you that for the second time you really need to glue this piece otherwise because of this of the structure of the frame is actually not really capable of holding this piece right here so this piece right here when you're messing around with the kit it will always fall down so super glue it don't think about it just super glue it so 
up to the accessory part let's talk about the two small accessory right here the left side is the full frontal uh figure and then the right side right here is the action base adapter all right now let's talk about this shield right here the shield wow it looks really amazing the gold and the gloss red looks really amazing turn it to the back right here we can see that there's a part for you to put the shield onto the ms itself and then you can see two beam x right here uh, the axe can attach on the shield or you can take it out and use it as a sep as an individual weapon uh, when you try to deploy the axe you just have to switch position and this is what it looks like when it deployed and when you put it onto the shinanju it's really simple if you're put if you're using it as a handheld weapon put on the short blade if you are using it in the shield put on the long blade to put just, on the shield is actually pretty simple there are two ways uh, you can choose either one of them but either but both of the option i don't really think is that stable anyway so just choose one of it that you like and then use it so the first one that we have right here is pretty simple it's just pretty straightforward it's just clipping the piece and just clipping the uh clipping the piece at the forearm right here and let your Shinanju hold the shield like this. So this is the first option. The second option right here, you can see there's a small piece right here up at the shield right here, just connected inside to the uh, shoulder armor right here, just, just like this. But right now, if I let go, if I let the Shinanju go, if I let the Shinanju go, you will see uh, the Shinanju can no longer hold up his own shield because of the weight. So I still recommend you just to clip the shield onto the forearm because honestly, this doesn't look pretty at all. The last accessory is this beam rival right here. It's not really that special, but there's a grenade launcher attached under the beam rival right here. You can take it out. And you can store it inside the shield. So it's just like this. So this is what it looks like without the grenade launcher. It's a pretty simple beam rival. It's pretty boring to store it at the back skirt. First, you need to remove the scope and you flip out this red piece that I just mentioned at the skirt armor part. And then you just basically find the spot and then just put it in. And this is how you put the uh, rival at the back skirt. By now, I think most of you thought that I didn't put on the backpack so I completely forgot about the backpack. No, I saved the backpack for the last because I want to test with you guys how stable my Shinanju will be after I put on the backpack. So first, let's briefly go about the backpack. So first, few tanks down here. It's a ball joint, so it's, there's, there's some movement. You can adjust the position. Uh, at the thruster right here, this upper piece right here is movable. The thruster can be open just like the anime. So first, you move up and move down. But the down piece right here, is really easy to fall out. I already super glue the other side because I'm putting it back in the shelf again anyway, so I don't see why I need to fix the joint. Plus, the joint design at the first is, is really questionable. They didn't really think about the depth of the joint should be, and the joint, once you move down, is really easy to pop out. I don't know what Ben I is thinking, but that design is horrible. And moving side to side is really nice, moving up and down as well. So the thruster movement is pretty okay, I would say that, but it's just this down piece right here is the part that I'm really pissed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment of truth. Can the Shinanju stand by itself after I equip on the backpack? Let's test this out. So this hole right here is obviously for you to put in the backpack. So it's pretty simple. You put it in and then you push down and the Shinanju backpack is locked in place. So now I'm gonna let go and see if it can stand by itself. Nope, it cannot stand by itself. Great, on the stand. Guys, this is the end of the Shinanju review. Thank you guys for watching. I spent a long, a long time to try to get the shield onto the Shinanju and then it's just fall off again and again and again and then I try to put the Shinanju onto the base and then the adapter and, and the Shinanju have two situations. Either it fell off from the adapter or either the base can't support it. It's just really hard to put on it. If you bought the ROG Shinanju, you must put it on the base because this thing cannot stand by itself. 100% for sure. This thing cannot stand by itself. And you know, the shield that I've so shown you about two ways to put on, you can either clip it onto the forearm or you can either put it into the shoulder armor. No, I tried either ways. The shield is not really supporting because the weight towards the torso and the waist there is 
it's really loose, it's not able to hold that much weight. So this is a complete fail. Listen to me, this product is a complete fail. This RG is looks really amazing, but the frame is the biggest problem of this RG Gamble kit. I do not recommend you to buy this, although uh, although the surface looks very, really nice, but I don't really recommend you to buy this because if you are planning to buy the RG Shinanju, um, you need to get an action base because the Shinanju is it can't even stand on, it can't even stand by itself. It's worse than the Saku two, and two. Uh, if you bought this, and I would just recommend you put it into the shelf. Don't touch it because this thing is really hard to pose and it's really loose. It's extremely loose so again thank you guys for watching make sure you subscribe to my channel hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever i upload a new video leave a like on this video and uh, i'll see you next time wow shinanju you, you look you look really nice but it's really disappointing to see that how many parts are falling off from this gobbler it took me a long time to put all this in space and the shield is it can't really clip on well so i think that the surface looks really nice but the frame is a mess it's a joke and uh, i don't recommend you to buy this rg shinanju even if you do buy it uh, you're gonna need to put it back you're gonna need to put it into the shelf and never touch it again or if you just want to play with it i think high grade is your best option because at least high grade is pretty stable you can mess around with the um with the accessory now this rg yes it looks really good it looks fascinating it looks stunning but it can't even move it, you just i just gonna have to put it to the shelf and never touch it again great all right enough of the ranting